Hi there. It's a lovely warm day here in late August. I'm going to take a bit of a walk around my local patch, just see what's going on. So come and join me. We'll go on a wild wander, see what's happening. Well, here are some fantastic cumulus clouds, blue sky of late summer. It's hard to beat. Just down here is something really interesting. So if we have a look over on these nasturtium flowers, you can see some of them. See this one right here? There's a these kind of curves bitten out of the flower. That's actually the work of a leaf cutter bee. And what they're doing is they're taking sections of the petal, in some cases of the leaves, and they're using those to make a small tube in which they lay their egg and the larva develops. So you see these quite neat, smooth curves. I'm oh, also looking at this, see on these brambles just here, the brambles themselves are actually just coming into fruit. And if we look at the leaves as well, loads of the leaves have got these spots and this is violet bramble rust. So it's a kind of gall like an abnormal growth or discoloration. In this case, it's caused by a fungus. The colour is just superb. Loads of it on this ramble. One, this little burn just here, this stream. Just a great spot. And there's a bridge down here as well. See this small bridge for a farm track. And this is the kind of place that I'll often look for signs of otters. And I've definitely seen otter signs under here before in the past. I've even got them on my camera trap, but I haven't looked under here for a while. So I'm curious to see if we can find any otter sprints as they drop into me. So they'll often do them on quite prominent places, like a lot of other carnivores do. They're communicating using the scent in their droppings. Um, and otters often do them in prominent rocks in the watercourse and also under the bridge. And already I can see, see this rock right here. That's quite exciting. It's dark. I'm getting a bit of a glisten off that. Oh, look at that. Lovely. Like I say, I haven't looked under here for a good few weeks. That's a beauty. Look. The fact that you see there was a fly actually came off, didn't there? Which suggests that that's actually pretty fresh. And then looking around, so just down here, there's an older sprint and it has bits of bone in as well, like bits of fish bone. With this one here, yeah, it's, that's really recent. I'd say it's within the um, last day or so. So I wonder where the otter is right now, somewhere up or down the bend. I wish I could share the smell with you because they have this quite distinctive smell. Those of you who've smelt them before will know they um, smell a bit like jasmine tea, sometimes described as fishy jasmine tea. But they'll use a favourite spot for sometimes for years. This I've been seeing lots of springs here for probably at least 12 years, something like that, under this bridge. Yeah, and you can see remains for sure of older strength. Great, that's a nice find. Nice to know that they're still really active here. I'll get my camera truck up here soon. I think. I can hear some snippets of robin song in the distance and the occasional chiff chaff as well. The robin's the more melodic one that we can hear. And generally towards late summer the birds tend to get pretty quiet after the young have fledged and the adults are molting the breeding season's almost over um, for most of the birds and most of the birds go quiet but towards late summer the robins start singing again and they'll be singing through the winter as well they hold a territory through the winter so to me hearing the robins picking up again with their song is one of the sounds of late summer see on the pond just here a lot of this duckweed that's growing and looking in really closely you might be able to see lots of little lines and you can see there are actually trails going through 
and there's various birds live here, mallards, moorhens, and so that's, they're actually leaving their trails in the duckweed. Oh, look down here, there's a little wasp. See just there, chewing away at the wood and actually chewing the, the wood for nest material. And they'll leave these quite distinctive stripes on the wood. It's fantastic. And sometimes you can hear them um, rasping away. Now, because it's a bit blustery, you probably won't be able to hear. Oh, sorry. Scared her away. Yeah, there's a tiny little mark just along here. She's been chewing. There's a nice set of tracks down in the sand just here. So if we look more closely, we can see these prints right here. This is a set of roe deer tracks. And we can see how the hind foot has landed slightly on the front foot. And the same with the next one along here. It's called an indirect register. This deer was walking quite slowly. And if we look at the size of them, just to give a rough idea of the scale there, each track is a little short of five centimeters, about 45 millimeters, something like that. Now, just right nearby, there's a set of smaller tracks. So here, see these ones here? They're actually closer together and they're also smaller. And these are quite a bit less than 45 mil, something like 35. And these are the tracks of a roe deer kid, or fawn as it's known. And so because these look a similar age, there's a good chance that this kid was following their mum along, walking along together, probably fairly recently because it rained heavily last night. So really nice to see. So thanks for joining me on this short wild wonder, just looking at a few of the signs of life round and about in part of my local patch. Feel free to post in the chat anything that you've been observing, whether it's direct sightings of wildlife or plants or signs or anything like that, I'm always interested to hear. So thanks again, and until next time, stay wild.